And I've seen it in the Odyssey community too, and the Mario 64. Like every, each of these communities are very close knit. And I think it's wonderful to see that here at Pace. All right, so we have got, again, just taking a quick rest. I see that someone in the chat said that I'm sweaty, and I don't feel sweaty. So that's kind of weird. I don't, I don't know if they got <laughs> your name somehow confused with mine, because I, I, I can tell I'm a little bit hot, but it's... Yeah, I don't, I'm not feeling like I'm being very perspiring. We do have a nice LED light shining on us, and, you know, I don't have, I don't have foundation on, so... And I, I, I also <laughs> actually have hyperhidrosis, so I, I sweat more than most people already. Like, I... Yeah, it's... And, like, the, the remedies for it typically are it worse than, like, just being damp all the time. And Tej now has a very interesting new look. Um, oh, okay. As, as well as Flad. I, you know, very surprised that uh, they were able to make this adjustment so quickly. I, I'm not exactly sure. You know, maybe some sort of shape-shifting going on. I mean, maybe. I, I, I should have known that there had to be some sorcery involved to be that dominant at this game. <laughs> and then yeah of course if you are seeing this game for the first time or the you know and you're interested in trying it out it is available on all platforms you can get it on the nintendo eShop. you can get it on the playstation store you can get it on steam um, there's a couple other ones too, I can't remember. Well, I mean Xbox as well, but like a, co a couple other PC platforms. Um, definitely worth the purchase. I mean, this is this game had received so many accolades last year. So many nominees for Game of the Year amongst AAA titles. It won Indie Game of the Year across a lot of different um, award shows. It got uh, stuff for music and impact to like the communities and stuff. So definitely worth it. I want a nice, quick uh, Golden Berries run from Teach here. Oh, a 7C Golden Berry? Uh, can we get an invisible one, though? What's up with that? <laughs> <laughs> that actually, that was the thing that I was going to do during my invisible run. If I had uh, the, the little extra time, I was going to attempt 7C with an uh, invisible motion on. Oh, wow. And I will say I have never done it before. I never finished it, but I made it here, of all places. About maybe so a, close to those spikes. Maybe a third of the way through. Let me tell you, getting the golden strawberry for this is very satisfying. <laughs> I can tell you, I felt real good when I got mine. I can only imagine, geez. And just Tej not even needing those single-use clouds. Just, meh. Let's, let's oh, yeah, dive this, underneath. This, this is looking like it's a success. Barring anything here. Now they... Yeah, nicely done. Nice! And we've got Flad jumping into practicing some lake skips here. Samurai Man has never played B and C sides. Uh, definitely, if you if you're a big fan of the game and you might and, and you like a challenge, I would certainly recommend it. It, it really ramps up the difficulty compared to the uh, original levels. Also, I'd like to take a quick moment. You might have seen this when we were on the commentary table. We've got these fantastic Pace coffee mugs. Is that the right term? I feel like it's not a, a tumbler. Is that a tumbler? Oh, no, it's definitely just a coffee mug. Okay, <laughs> it, might, you know, it could be something fancy on there. I'm not sure. Um, <clears throat> you can get the merch from Speedrun's Stream Labs store. And as a heads up, in regarding all Pace merchandise is actually going to be up for about one more week. So the Pace merchandise is definitely limited run. Um, actually, you know, maybe I should just go and get myself one of these coffee mugs right now because I have been eyeing on it. I just love the logo. I love the font. I love the color. Yeah, the Pace this. logo, just shout outs to the Pace logo. It's so well yeah, designed. Yeah, I need to, I need to know who did the logos. Well, we'll know that in just a moment here. Three, two, one, go. They're uh, off We are moving into too. race number two. So now, Electric, we've seen that Tej taking the first lost at pace. What do you think he is planning on doing to try to uh, prevent that from happening in race number two? 
Well, you know, with, with what we were talking about just during the break about how Vlad really lit that fire under Tej, I feel like he, he just effectively did the same thing now. I mean, Tej really has got to be like mindful of the fact that he's got to bring his absolute A game. And so maybe nice. he will be trying to play just a little bit more relaxed, for lack of a better word, because he said numerous times, you know, you try to go too fast and things just can fall apart pretty dramatically. And so maybe we'll see him take a little bit easier of an approach on a couple of things, not compromise on strats per se, but, you know, just let uh, lose like a couple frames here and there just due to not uh, trying to optimize those jumps quite so dramatically. I would like to point out, right before when I said you can't do this, both Tej and Fly just reached over and gave each other a fist bump prior to jumping into City. And again, just that sportsmanship between both runners here. Like, I'm, um, it's, it's giving me life, folks. I'm just saying that right now. Yeah, I mean, very wholesome community, ultimately. So we got coming into this corner boost. Nice. Ooh, cutting it close there on TJ's screen, but able to get away. These guys are just carving through City. City actually is the, the, the most popular IL category on speedrun.com. I guess it makes sense. It's the first stage, right? You know? Yeah. Everybody's like, oh, I could play this. I play it all the time. It's going to be easy. You know, so that's <laughs> <laughs> like every, that's like the typical casual turn into speedrunner voice right there. <laughs> and then you actually try things for yourself and you're like, wait. Yeah, can you imagine just like, oh man, I played this game a lot. I'm going to submit my time of two minutes and 30 seconds. And like, <laughs> it's got to be the fastest time. And then you just go to the leaderboard and you're just like, how are they getting 59 seconds? How are they getting sub one minute? What's going on here? And so we are in old sight. Yet again, now see, that's what I was talking about with that brick there. Um, Having the right distance when you dash into it allows you to actually get your dash back and dash down and save some time instead of waiting for Madeline to bounce off of it and land and then move forward. And we, you only see it in two particular sections, here in Old Side and then in the, the room in Reflection where you had to break a couple of those bricks. And so we got Tej moving through. Nice Pong action here with this. That's what it looks like to me, just like Pong ball kind of yep. just bouncing back and forth there. <laughs> Flad having a little bit of trouble boosting into the corner for that uh, green block, but was able to go ahead and make it work on those little small skips, avoiding uh, another dash through the green block later on. All right, so now we're in the this room here. Teach had a little bit of hang up there, and looks like again just not getting the height that he wants out of that first block there, having to dash up forward instead of straight across. But the rest is looking real clean. And if Vlad not too far behind here, it's just a nice little home stretch. Just barreling through. Nice corner boost there. She's going to head into a wake at 124. Vlad on the hand looks like they come in at a 126. I'm going to say a little shift in time here. Oh, Teach falling short. Going to have to readjust himself there. And you see that muscle memory kind of coming. You see how he hit that corner, but then like you saw the two dashes immediately afterwards. Like he's just ready to to go through the, the usual flow of the game there. Oh yeah, definitely you know, really itching to go ahead and recover. Yeah, and actually Fladerva here with the about a sec one second lead heading into Celestial Resort. That little piano ditty at the start is just so nice. I love those. Actually, one of those is in my sub notification. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm going to use this. It sounds really good. And again, we are in Celestial Resort. I always wanted to talk about the section where, um, I don't even know what instrument it is. I think Alina Rain referred to it as a theremin, which Ooh. you don't, yeah, which you don't really hear. You hear it once we get into huge, like the, the labyrinth portion of huge mess. It's very short lived, but I really, really like that part. It's based yep. on the, I guess, when the melody comes in, if you were going to break it down. Because, like, the song on the soundtrack is, like, seven minutes long. And you don't really hear it there, I mean, too, too often. In case you're not familiar with it, it's a very interesting instrument. It, it's like a wooden box with a looped antenna horizontally sticking out of one side and then a vertical straight antenna at the other side. And when you move your hands near it, it's actually able to detect 
how you're moving your hands around it, I guess due to like the electric uh, feel. I, I'm, not exactly, I'm not exactly sure how scientifically it works, but you play it by like waving your hands near it, and it's, it's a very intriguing instrument. Go look up footage of it if you can. I know there's- Oh, Teeth singing to death there? Oh. Yeah, pretty rough in that room. Yeah, this part right here. And also, yeah, I'm being uh, confirmed in chat that it is theremin. I definitely got nervous when I said it because I could have been completely wrong and just looked like an idiot. But and it's it's a very like otherworldly sound. When they were first invented, they were used a lot in like science fiction soundtracks and such. But uh, more modern, they've they've been used in different contexts like this, and uh, it's a really great effect. Yeah, if you want a basic demonstration, I know there's a video of uh, someone playing somewhere over the rainbow on one, and you, you can immediately hear it. It has a very distinctive sound. And yeah, Achromatic Sky, uh, with the other factoid, it was the first fully all electronic instrument. Uh, I'm pretty sure the X-Files theme also uses one in it. Uh, I'm not sure about the Dr. Who theme. I never did watch that, unfortunately. I mean, we're hearing that right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm yep. hearing the way. As soon as you point that, I didn't even put those two together, and it's now I'm not going to be able to unhear that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just give that boom, 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 boom. It really has like that, that <laughs> super spacey feel to it. it. It's so strange. And you got to wonder if that's like a, a chicken or an egg thing. Like, is it just because it was used so much for sci-fi that we associate it with that spacey, otherworldly, atmospheric thing? Or is that just an inherent quality of that sound? Oh, both are in that into... corner boost in this winged strawberry room. I need to incorporate that into my run just because it looks really cool. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's a bonus that it goes really fast, but it just looks really cool. Beautiful corner boost going into towels from Flad. Jeez. Nice. Very, very clean. Nice ending. corner boost from Teach on those stairs for the Derby getting it too. Just keeping that momentum as they move into the next room. Like those small instances, man, it's crazy. Yup. And so we are now in elevator shaft using all the dash crystals that we have to make things work here and just plow through these coins yet again. Now, again, we're, we're coming up. Uh, I don't think they're going to go for checkpoint list. I feel like that's no. not going to happen. Yeah, I, I don't feel like we're going to see it today for, for whatever reason. Oh, but he's climbing too quick there and having to restart. And actually, we're looking at the RTA, or RTA, hello, ITG. About a seven second difference here between both runners. Wait, there's there's a game in the timer? Because, I mean, you did just say in timer game. Sorry, I thought a sneeze was coming on. <laughs> so <laughs> I wanted to quickly hit the mute button here because I'm not trying to convey that onto anybody. Let's watch this movement through Shiro. Okay, Teach, I don't understand. Teach got corner bopped right there too. And there's nothing there. Oh no. Oh, Sliding right. into those uh, dust bunnies. Yeah, so having to deal with death again. cycle with Shiro now. And it looks like I, I've been noticing this throughout the event, but I haven't been able to like put my finger on exactly what it is. It looks like Vlad actually still has like some sort of visual effects enabled that Teach doesn't. Yes, I believe that is um, the photosynthesis mode. This is what it's called in the options. Nice and done from Flad. Flad's gonna clock in with a 724 with a 417. Actually, there's a big difference here because Teach coming in at 434. Just a little over eight minutes as we move into Golden Ridge. It's photosensitive mode, the chat with that instant correction. Photosynthesis. Did I say photosynthesis? You did. The process by wow. which plants make food from sunlight. GGFC. <laughs> GGFC <laughs> race. Complete wrong word. All right, well, you guys know what I'm talking about. It's fine. Look, I haven't been to school in a very, very, very long time, okay? I get my big words mixed up every now and then. Sometimes I frustrate long words into a sentence to make people think I'm smarter than I. Yes, the game makes sugar from sunlight and water. That's, that's how we get Golden Ridge. <laughs> <laughs> So they're asking if there's a rule about taking time between chapters. Uh, you are allowed to take a short break in between 
each chapter. I want to say it's an unwritten 90 seconds, if need be. Yeah, we, we haven't really seen an issue where, I, I mean, none of these guys are really, um, it, it's certainly undesirable to take more than like five, ten minutes between these races and let your hands like warm down. You know, just, just that quick little relax, a little bit of stretching, going ahead and taking a breather, standing up, stretching your legs. You know, it, it, all these runners want to get back into the action as quickly as possible. I still can't believe I said photosynthesis. <laughs> it, it I am super hung up on that. <laughs> it, it happens. You know, these comms have been, well, everyone at Pace, has, especially shout outs to the behind the scenes staff of Pace. I don't know if a lot of people on stream have realized it, but like, there are a number of couches in this venue that are being occupied by sleepers at various points just because they've been spending so much time awake making sure this event goes as smoothly as possible. Especially huge shout outs to Big Sim or uh, Milo. Like, all these guys have just been really, yeah, really busting their tails, yeah. Running rampant, and we appreciate all the effort that they put in. And also, thanks so much, At Me. That really means a lot. We're hearing from our boss, Steve, in the chat. Thank you so much for saying that we're amazing. <laughs> so we are moving through here. Flat again at a very nice time here, 2.41. Teach now. Actually, looking to maybe get a little bit of time on him. Maybe, yeah, just about a second here. Nicely done. 240 nice. from Teach. Uh, yes, we will be going by in game time at the end. Oh, yeah, that's, I can't believe we nearly forgot that. Shout out to all the other comms, too, because both uh, Odyssey and SM64 have amazing commentators. Oh, yeah, definitely. We have a bunch of all stars here. Just shout out to everyone at Pace, yeah. even just the attendees. Thank you so much for attending. Oh, definitely the attendees. Everybody just kind of chilling, and I'm seeing more people. I'm definitely excited for tomorrow when we get to the grand finals. Like, I'm looking forward to seeing these seats filled up and ready to go. Yep. And I feel that, uh, I think one of the nice things too, and this is, uh, again, just how much of it, like, Ooh, a great game. Oh, Yeet! <laughs> Yeet! Sorry. No, it's Continue. fine. I will. Oh, wait, 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 Hold on wait, for one the sec. double. Yeet. Yeet! Let's go. There we go. Let's go. Nice and satisfying. If you've watched the league, you know that I will do that every time. But yeah, so, you know, we're going into the grand finals for all three games. And I mean, when you think about it, Mario 64, iconic speedrunning game. I mean, like, legendary, right? And then Odyssey 2, just filling in, trying to fill in those footsteps and doing a fantastic job. But then we have this little indie game, Celeste, coming in and just being able to hang toe to toe with those big boys. Yeah, I mean, th this may be controversial, but I feel like in many ways, Celeste is a little bit superior to most of the 2D Marios. Because I, I feel like 2D Mario is, is technical in a, in a slower sense. Basically, to me, this is Mario Brothers with no enemies that you can jump on, and it, well, guys, technically you have a few that you can, but it's Mario Brothers with a dash. Yeah, in my opinion, that's how yeah, it's I feel very about it. rapid movement. It, it, it's like if you combine the platforming of Mario with the speed of Sonic, because Sonic, a, a lot of the levels kind of become an auto scroller at a bit of a point, which is cool. Ooh, flat with that first bubs drop fail, but you can see he's able to shake it off a bit more readily this time. You know, just kind of yeah, saying, okay, gonna get that, he's going to get this opportunity to start carving into that lead now. Flat coming up with his second attempt, and he's it's good. It nice, go. nice. Let's go. Let's so go. Teach able to save just a little bit of time, but not too much. And we'll see. He's going to hit this. Oh, actually taking a death here on that spring. That spring is so tricky. If you are too low, you run out of time before you can actually get up to hit that spring to get your dash and jump back. So teach entering this vertical room at 1254. Flat running into the same problem here. So this actually, oh, yeah, again, th that spring is really difficult to deal with. You don't want to go too early and you don't want to go too late. So yeah. Flat now with about a five second lead as Teach is heading to in the mirror. Yeah, no, I 
I feel that it there's a lot of Mario inspiration shown here from like Matt and company. And I mean, oh, you know, definitely. And they also have uh, Towerfall, which was like Matt Makes Games' uh, previous title. Mm, yeah. And they actually, you know, they, they they have the dash mechanic in there. In there as well. You can kind of you can kind of do hypers. It's not the same caliber as it is in here, but get some nice movement options from that. So. And it's certainly the, the level design, I'm sure, comes from just a lot of time spent playing with, like, Super Mario Maker, Super Mario World, World Long yeah, Hacks. Definitely. Like, I mean, it's certainly 2D Mario has to be given at least credit as an inspiration in oh, many so. of the facets. And I think just, like, the whole approach, too, to the, the design. Like, have you noticed how, like, let's take Mario Odyssey, for example. Like, we have Cappy, right? So that you have this mechanic, and then the game is built around the game, Yes. Right? And it is, it's like Capturing each... things, using the cap to do all these other things. You have the same kind of idea here with Celeste, where you have this dash, and then the feature, and then you have everything else built around it. From a yeah, like the dream blocks, like the you yeah. know, kind of first Dashing time you're dealing those. with held dashes. And then when you actually get to these orbs, you know, you have a limited ability to control based on where you hit them. Yeah, and like the red orbs going all the way across levels. Even things as mundane as like platform movement being controlled by dashes. Flat with a 1420, or as some may choose to say it, a 1 for 20. Depending on how you look at it. And it looks like Teach had a 14-24. So we got a four-second lead on Flutter every side, which Teach was able to carve into. That Miss Bub Drop definitely playing a part in that. But we are moving into Reflection. Now, Flutter is practicing Lake Skip here. Wait, um, wait, wait. Hold on. I'm so sorry. Tasselfoot. Matt Makes Games was responsible for money sees? I, I can't even tell you how many hours I... Also, shout out to Tasselfoot if... Big, good jobs on Lake Skip, too. Oh, yeah, actually, yeah. Tasselfoot uh, is... If a you were a, a Flash gamer back in, like, the late 2000s, early 2010s, you know that name. I guarantee you know it. I don't. Really? I don't. He, he was big on a... If you ever had a point-and-click escape game that you were a bit stuck on, you, you'd you always look for, like, one of his walkthroughs. He ended up, like, two, I think, uh, posting a decent number of save files for uh, various games for other stuff. He was, he was just huge in the Flash game community. I think he was, like, one of the highest level members on Congregate. Sorry, this is like, that was my life like, like three right years in, like, in middle oh, school. I'm a little shocked he's watching. Shout out to Tassel. And I, I also just, I didn't even realize Matt Makes Games made Money Seas. That, that was a, uh, a big Flash game that I, I forget how, I'm, another one that I played a bunch of was Tower of Greed, but I know that that wasn't by him. Yeah, and actually Tasselfoot uh, is a Grease Runner as well. Really? Yes. I didn't even know that. Pretty natural that he came over into the speedrunning community, I feel like. Yeah, again, I will, I will hype up Grease as well. It's another game that I run, but it's, like, fantastic. Please, please play it. Please experience it. Oh, yeah, after, uh, before oh, yeah, uh, all of these the races, intro. yeah, he's, yeah. FC Racer showed me the intro cutscene, and he, he sold me on the game already, so. That cutscene, whoo. And Tower of Greed is by your friends. That's, I... I've poured so much time into Tower of Greed at times that, like, I've gotten the Tetris vision where, like, I'll, I'll look at a wall and it'll, like, look like it's sliding upwards a bit. That game, oh, man. I never did end up getting the uh, impossible achievement for, like, getting up 100 floors or whatever it is, but I, I certainly tried a lot. And I think I got to, like, 50-something. I got, like, halfway there a few times. And Samurai Man with this interesting message... What does Matt Does Games does for a living? Nice save from Flad. Wow, that was very close. Now a three-second lead here as we head into Ravine. This is going to get really interesting as we get into this battle and fight. Three-second difference. Deaths are going to be very important. Oh, yeah. Especially, Especially all, thing, all things considered because, like, the battle and fight, in my opinion, is probably next to 5B, one of the most optimized sections of the game. Yeah, and so. there's a lot of very tight, precise movement that just one false step, just putting in something a few frames early will really, really wreck you. And especially in the back half, you can lose so much time. And it, it, it's in these rooms that just have really brutal movement sections, ultimately, towards the end even. And, and that's, that's the thing, a lot of these rooms, like they'll sometimes save some of the hardest movement for the very end. And of course, casually you're playing through and it's like, you know, I can get through the entire level nine out of ten times, but then it's the very end that keeps making a reset. 
you know, even though the stream is not synced right now, I would love to actually hear both streams if, like, you can have only the game audio in one of them, because you're just hearing that from both sides. Oh, man, it sounds like it would be pretty dope. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just I love those little dropouts. It, like, almost feels like like somehow battle is like a fundamental part of the core of the game, which I mean, like story-wise she is, but I mean, it's like every hit on her, like you're almost destroying the code in a way. It's, I don't know, it's just, shout out to Matt Makes Games, the whole game is phenomenal. We can just go on and on and on. Glad having it. to readjust it, not getting to the top of that falling brick. Oh, Teach almost getting ahead of himself there. It's certainly going to make him take a little step back, take a deep breath, take this section a little bit more calm. So Teach getting ready for the second round of the battle and fight here. I feel like he's going to clock in at a 12.55. There to be not too far behind. You see, he's going to be a little bit close here. Actually, Flutterby also at 18.55, so we are tied up as we head into the second round of the battle and fight. And so now we're on that second to last screen on Tija's side. We're about to see this. This is going to be exciting. Actually, you know, I hope that if they do end up with the same amount of time, if they are all right with just doing a countdown going into Summit. Yeah, I, I'd certainly hope so. That'd be really, cool. I mean, really if they cool. don't, I totally understand that because it might involve, you know, having to wait. But at the same time, that is would be an epic way to close out this second race here. And so getting the level up about 44, 45. Right, so so it, it could actually happen that they're... Yeah, so we're going to see. I believe it's an eight total of eight seconds when Madeline gets into Madeline here. So They're exactly like synced. 28 or 28. 20.05, I think, on Tija's side. 2804. Vlad now coming up. Oh, this is gonna be really close, folks. 204552 is that exact time on Tej's screen. Vlad also with the 2004. We are neck and neck, folks. So Tej is waiting. Okay, we're gonna get that countdown going for you guys. Are we gonna, are we gonna do this? We, okay. Is this when, whenever Vlad's ready, go ahead and get yourselves prepared. You will get the countdown from us. Get yourselves prepped. Yeah, go ahead and get to the uh, the screen that Flad's on, Teej. Well, do they want to? Yeah, because y'all are synced right now. Oh, yeah, no, they can do it with the postcard. Yeah, yeah, the postcard. Yeah, do, do it with the postcard so they can jump in. That's what oh, uh, Sushi and no, Chai did. No, there's no postcard here. Oh, you're right. They have to do oh, well, too late. Well, basically <laughs> wow. synced. Okay, Ooh, so it's, it's close yeah, enough. It's close enough. We're good. We're good. It's fine. So here we go. Wow, this is going. This is going to be explosive. These two are capable of just having very close times into summit. And it's really a matter of who gets that better summit, which is, I mean, so much can happen throughout. These guys with a just glorious start, just zipping through. Now we are going to go off stats in the league. Teach's average summit time is eight twenty. Ooh, flat with that first summit death, and at the end of this room too. Really unfortunate. Could go ahead and lose a few seconds and give Teach that initial early boost. Yeah, going to the stats here. Teach with an average of an 824.7 in Summit during the league, and Philadelphia with an 830 flat. So Teach with the slight advantage based on league times here. But as I mentioned, Philadelphia got wor IL World record unofficially last night with an 805. So he's more than capable of making that happen. Because we are in 500 now. Teach with the reverse hyper here. I feel like Teach is gonna have to put on all the pressure by doing all these advanced strats. Nice reverse of there. Oh, we're gonna take another death here. Going for that hyper ultra, hyper ultra, ultra. I am so caught up in this. My words are getting mumbled, folks. I apologize. <laughs> it happens when when the hypeness is real. It'll happen. Teach first into 1,000. He's got 
just enough height there. Oh, miss getting just slamming into the wall there. Not getting the corner boost, unfortunately. Just a small time loss. Flight coming in. He's got the readjust here. Oh, actually, okay. I stand corrected. I thought he was gonna <laughs> not make it, but he did. Yeah, that's an really. Of, like that's an instance I was talking about. If you're too low on that last string block, um, when you get to the end of it, you actually can collide with the wall and die. So yeah, and the, the hitbox doesn't quite look like you'll hit it, but you will. <laughs> yeah, it's usually based off of what height you're in when you come out of the dream block before. At least that's how I gauge it. Beautiful so movement so far in 1500. Getting into this first long room here. And coming up on the uh, rooms where he had a lot of trouble. Nicely done. We have the ultra room coming up. Beautiful oh ultras. Gosh, excellent. Wow. Vlad's going to to keep up with that. Yeah, Vlad going into the Dua the Cilia Opal Ultra Room. I, I don't even know. I was trying to say 20 times, but. <laughs> but Vlad clearing that too. Nicely done. Taking the Franker Zebra out. This teacher's is moving now into 2000. 23-15. So he's got a slight lead here. But again, we are, we've are we got a lot of mountain to climb. Anything can happen. Teach in the snowball room. Oh, one, he didn't have his dash back, but took that snowball right there. Gonna have to do this one all over. Able to get out of the second try. Going for the auto scroller, skip, skip. Making it looks super textbook. Excellent work there. Flad also and now going for it as well. Okay. Okay, great. He's got the. Nice. Okay, With nice. The two, nice. Let's go. Double bound under the terrain. Beautiful. Beautiful. So you have to first get your dash back with a uh, spike jump, and then you have to do that really precise dash through that very, very thin little spike corridor. Now teaching the battle and alley -oop portion. Vlad not too far behind. Man, I, I love how the, the music gets so much more peaceful in uh, two and five hundred portion. Yeah. It's, it's really that calm before the storm. Teach taking a death in this room. He's going to take this one a little slow again. Oh, no. He's going to allow therapy to actually flat have the lead here. Uh, yup. Looks like he does going into the key skip. Yeah, we'll see when you get this key unlock here. Oh, flat having issues getting up these spike jumps. Okay, it is working this time. Oh, this one is close. All right, T's in the thread the needle room. And it's clean, okay. Now, now door skip. One skip, two skip, nice, nice. As Flat also threads that needle, first try. Red skip, blue skip, and there we go. All four door skips, nice and clean as these guys are gonna be moving into 3000. Right, here we go. So Tej landing on flag number 30 at 25, 53. Flag about to touch down on flag number 30 at 21, 53. Three. Okay. Oh boy. Okay. Synchronized in the belts. flags. Let's see here. 28 touch on 2607. I mean, good yeah, movement. Here we go. We got movement. Movement is key. 26.06 from Flat, so managing to make up about a second just through cleaner move. This could come down to flag number one, folks. We'll have to wait and see. Because ideally, I think they both have the same sort of strats. Tej with the miss input there. Oh, 
He's in a grand battle here at 2639. Flag at 2636, so Flag now a three second lead here as we head into updraft. Dashing into that crystal to have both dashes, allowing you to do that nice little skip there. Teach on flag number 14. All right, well, let's see what happens here at flag number 12. We saw Flag take a death on that in the previous race. She's going to go away there. Flad clears it as well, skipping flag number 10 on Tija's side. Flood Derby also skipping. Oh, we got TGH skipping flag number 9 as well. He's going to make it through and hit flag number 7. I'll fly to doing the safer approach. Wow, this is incredibly close, folks, as we move into the home stretch here. Tija is the first one to get to flag number 5, looking at 27.53. Blue Derby now also getting there at 27.49, so Blue Derby still in the lead, but there's a lot of pressure here. Pretty much if Blue Derby can play this one clean, he's going to win and take the set. Yep, at flag number three, at about right at the 28 mark. Sorry, I've been so silent, just, just <laughs> transfixed on this match. All right, T's now going into flag number one here. This movement is really important, it's very crucial. Blue Derby also coming up here. Is he yeah, gonna... he's got about a second on him just based on the flag one time. Tej with a twenty eight thirty one and flag coming out to twenty eight twenty six. Woo! Blue Derby taking the set <laughs> by five seconds, folks. Wow. That does not look like the face of a man that just won this set against the world record holder, but he's got to be feeling that excitement. Maybe he's just too focused on game three. Could certainly feel that. GG's to both these guys. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, a stellar run from both of them to be so close towards the end. Just five seconds. Absolutely nutty. And we still have one more. We got one more to go to before we end, uh, end the Celeste night. So. Yep. And I mean, what are you looking forward to in this one? Because this is this is going to be a pretty wild one. I mean, one. what more can I ask for? <laughs> right? Like, what else? I mean, okay, if I were. Uh, I want world record, but that's, you know, <laughs> that seems a little too out of, you know, just asking for, you know, a little too much. I mean, these guys are playing out of their minds right now. It's great to see that Flutter be kind of getting back into his groove after yep. like, the first kind of, just a little bit of rough patch. It would have been, you know, it's unfortunate that it didn't come soon enough, but it's great to see that he's, he's just getting into his own and making everything kind of just work for him. And we're seeing that here. Um, I know that Tej just... I think, like you said, he's, I, I feel like maybe he's playing a little too fast getting ahead of himself. So he's just going to try to slow it down in his mind and just try to make that work. So we'll see that comes into play. But, I mean, it's still anybody's game. Yeah, it's and I mean, just up for grabs. It's for just like, for oh these gosh. times and for these guys to be finishing so close, is, it's just wild. And it, it just goes to show how neck and neck they truly are in their skill level. And that's that's what really makes these races so exciting. It's just yeah, it's, no lead is at all solid. They're both capable of making the same mistakes. They're both capable of making the same time saves. Oh. So actually, I'm going to step out because they're taking a group picture because one of the other Celeste runners is heading out. So you oh, okay. be good? Uh, yeah. You, you can fly solo? All right, I'll be oh, right back. Course. Sorry, folks. So, yeah, great stuff from these runners. And um, certainly looking forward to the next round that we're about to have. So we can go ahead and look at these times here. I'm going to go ahead and pull out our uh, handy-dandy stats spreadsheet. But already, the Mirror Temple time, especially on Flat side, really nice and impressive. And the Summit time, a little bit of slack, but totally okay. Apologies for the dead air, just pulling up the stats sheet. 
So this stat sheet tracks the uh, only the race stats of the GSA races, but they are tracking every single GSA race. So um, let's go ahead and pull up, first off, uh, Flad's stats, based on him going ahead and taking that win here. So compared to his average times, that city was marginally better, uh, getting a 104.8, whereas his average is normally a 105. Um, and Old Sight also going a tad worse than normal, but looking at Resort, saving about six seconds over his average in Resort, pretty stellar time there, uh, saving two seconds in Golden Ridge, uh, Temple A and Temple B together, you know, a little bit of a uh, mistake here and there. Of course, with that bulb drop fail, the uh, 355, you know, a few seconds off of his uh, PBs in these race situations. But uh, going on into Reflection and Summit, uh, playing about at his average, and Summit actually playing uh, eight seconds ahead of his average. So overall, a, a really good run from Flat, and especially compared to all of the rest of his league runs, his uh, standard season average has been a 28.51, with his playoff average as a 28.40. And so this run certainly uh, going ahead and moving that a little bit further down. And teaches this a couple headset almost behind. busted my face wide open. <laughs> Really? <laughs> I was trying to open it up and like, I lost my grip on it. I almost got my nose. Oh, yeah. The, the, the like, headband <laughs> just snaps apart. It's, it's pretty wild. I'm just making the greatest moments here at pace. <laughs> First photosynthesis. Synthesis. <laughs> I'm still caught on that, man. I hope, I'm glad that everybody had a good time with that because I am cracking up with that. And we go ahead and see Tej doing some practice in resort here. Some of these sections that did give him some decent trouble earlier. Uh, Captain Shark Bay asking, where can he get a shirt like what Electric is wearing? I got this a while back. I believe it was a limited time merch thing. It was from actually Easy Escape. Um, and there was another shirt at the time. It was like a, a drawing of Mario BLJing up a staircase. And I really, really wish that I could have picked that one up. But uh, had to choose between the two. So I went ahead and chose this one and figured I'd wear this uh, Ganondorf shirt in commemoration of that OOT any percent run later on. That should be super, super hype. Yeah, oh, so yeah. Yes. My, my quick, uh, not even related to the event merch shirt. Apologies. <laughs> Apologies for, I swear I put on any first print deodorant. These, these are these just so are, nervous. These, these sides are pretty, pretty warm. Yeah. But yeah, and I also have the Reflection shirt. I believe this is from Fan Gamer as well. I decided to wear this, you know, because I had my run today. Just oh, yeah, and the, those uh, other shirts you were wearing, like the Celeste Mountain. Yeah, the Celeste Mountain. That's, really like, nice that's probably my favorite shirt. And then also the hoodie that TGH has as well. Actually, uh, Sushi was wearing the other shirt too. Yeah, and uh, Tej was uh, showing off the other day, he was wearing his uh, Noble hoodie over it, but he was showing off that uh, drawn Madeline strawberry grab Oh hoodie. yeah, the one that's kind of like um, Super Mario Bros. 3? Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. yeah I didn't one. even realize that that's what it was mimicking. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it was a good drawing. Well, here we yeah, go. They have, they have a lot of, of cool shirts, so. All right, so getting in and just taking care of these rooms. I'm respecting this move here from Vlad going into the Bubs Drop Room. And again, folks, don't forget, we have fantastic merch on the Streamlabs, on the Speedrun Streamlabs site. Um, I don't know the command. <laughs> Chat, help me out. Look at how consistent he's getting Bubs Drop now on those repeat attempts. <laughs> 